So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can kill your particles um, based on a collision with a specific object. Um, there was a time I was doing a snow globe simulation and the particles were driven by fluids and I couldn't for the life of me keep them in the snow globe because it was being shaken, it was moving super fast. I had the sample set up to 20 and still wasn't doing it. So I had locators set up like in my last tutorial to, you know, if it goes below it, above it, and I had 20 locators, my scene just went crazy. Um, and there's a lot to set up. So what I ended up doing was just putting a sphere around it, and if they collided with that, I, then I wanted it to kill the particle, because they also had to collide with the glass. So within the glass, or there was glass, and then a collision sphere around that to kill them. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. So we got these particles falling again. And I'm going to get my outliner out again. And make these collide with that. Select your particle, then your object, and go to particles. Make collide. And we'll do the same for the cube. And now that bounce off, pretty cool. Alright, so every particle object has a neat little attribute called, um, I think it's collision geometry index. And the funny thing about it is if you search that in help, all it says is it's not supported with end particles, which is extremely helpful, Autodesk. So, let's get that out, and I'll explain it a little bit to you. So, let's add it. It's a gen general, go to particle, and it's collision geometry index right here. We'll add it. So, let's select these, and we'll go to my hypergraph, I'm just holding the spacebar down here. And if you click on this button right here, the yellow box with two gray box cut boxes coming out of it, it's its input and output connections. You can see we have our sphere and our cube and their shape nodes and their geoconnector nodes, which is how it relates to our particle over here. So if you hover over these noodles, they're called, that first line, swept geometry, particle shape one dot collision geometry, and then there's a number. That's your collision geometry index number. So the first one we did was zero, and the second one we added is one. So we can say, hey particle, if your collision geometry index is one, which would be our cube, kill the particle because I said so. So I'll get back to my perspective view, holding spacebar down again, and select our particle, and we'll set our life lifespan to lifespan pp, which it is already, and a creation expression says be 10 seconds long, unless we do something in the runtime, which we're going to do. So. If you remember that um, if our collision geometry index is which is two equal signs, that's one, which is the cube, I want my lifespan to be zero. want it to die for whatever reason. And hit create. Now if you get rid of that stuff, get my play controls out. I'll leave it in wireframe so you can see they die as soon as they hit that, but our sphere they just bounce off. 
and then they can that particle is going to hit it right there oh, maybe I missed it but it can come in handy in certain situations but just to show you let's bring up our help and we'll search for collision geometry index once it loads alright so load it up We'll type in collision index. And nothing shows up. And this is all I've been able to find, and it says the collision geometry index output attribute is not supported for end particle collision events. So. Yeah, I guess they want to keep it a secret. Anyway, I hope you find that helpful.